In this example, we'll take our ideas about frames of reference and use them to sort out what the forces are going to be on this blade, which is moving in our fixed frame of reference. So there'll be some forces here, Fy and Fx, acting on the fluid as the uh, blade moves in the frame of reference. So the jet is moving at velocity vj. The blade is also moving in the same original direction at vb. So there's the velocity of the blade, the velocity of the jet. And those are both in the fixed frame of reference. Our fixed frame of reference has locations, axes y and x. And we're going to switch to a frame of reference that's moving with the blade so that the blade is stationary. So if we draw our little control volume like this, it's still got the same shaped blade inside it. All of the angles and arrangements are the same and the forces are going to be the same. Here's our blade. We've got a flow coming in here at V1, and it's going out there at V2, both relative to the control volume, which is moving at VB. V1 is going to be equal to whatever the jet velocity was here, VJ, minus whatever the blade velocity was because the control volume is now moving at VB. So this is the relative velocity of the, of the jet relative to the control volume. We're going to neglect friction and neglect gravity in here. So V1 and V2 are going to be equal to each other by Bernoulli. And the angle at which V2 comes out is going to be the same as the angle theta of the blade here because the flow is just going to follow that blade and that blade is stationary. So now that we've got this set out, we can find out what the forces are in the y direction and in the x direction acting on the fluid to make it change from velocity v1 to velocity v2. So the sum of the forces in the x direction will be equal to m dot u out minus m dot u in. The difference between the momentum of the flow going out and the momentum going in. That'll be equal to m dot u out minus u in or expanding out. m dot will be rho times the velocity. That's vj minus vb. That's v1 times the cross-sectional area of the jet and the area is still the same the flow still looks the same, even though it's now in a moving control volume. So that area of the jet remains the same. But the mass flow actually reaching the blade is lower, reduced by the relative velocity. The x component going out up here is going to be v2 times the cosine of the angle. And v2 is just equal to v1, equal to vj minus vb. So we'll have Vj minus Vb times cosine of theta minus, so that's the component in the x direction for the exiting velocity, minus the u component that it came in with, which is just V1, which is Vj minus Vb. And if we simplify that a little more, we'll get density, area of the jet, the relative velocity Vj minus Vb, is here and here and here so squared times cos theta minus 1. Cos theta is always less than 1 so this is actually going to wind up with a negative x force and given that this is the force acting on the fluid and that the force would be positive in this direction that means it's a force acting in that direction. So that seems to work out for me. Some of the forces in the y direction, and again, this is acting on the fluid. M dot V out, the y component on the output, minus 
m dot v in. The mass flows are the same at inlet and outlet because it's steady flow. And in this case, the inlet component of velocity in the y direction, it's all going in the x direction, there is no component in the y direction. So we'll wind up with the same as we had before for the uh, mass flow, rho vj minus vb times aj times the m dot v out. So the v out, the vertical component, is going to depend on this angle theta, and it's going to be dependent on sine theta. So it will be the velocity at 2, which is vj minus vb times sine theta minus the 0 vertical velocity component that it came in with. Or equal to, similarly to up here, rho aj vj minus vb squared sine theta. And the things that we've used along the way, just to make sure that we keep track of them, m dot, it's the same all the way along. We used m dot in here and m dot down here. And m dot is equal to rho v1 aj, which is equal to rho, and v1 is the relative velocity vj minus vb, and aj, the area of the jet. v2 is equal to v1 by Bernoulli. u out, we used u out up here. It's going to depend on v2 times cos theta, and v2 is equal to v1, and v1 is equal to vj minus vb, so it's vj minus vb cos theta. u in is just equal to v1 is equal to vj minus vb. v out equal to v2 sine theta, and here's where we had v2 sine theta, and v2 is just equal to vj minus vb and times sine theta. And v in, as we said, was equal to zero. So taking all of this together, we can figure out the forces fx and fy that have to act on the fluid. fx is going to be negative, fy is going to be positive, because we're slowing the fluid down in the x direction and speeding it up in the y direction. And if we carry through the numbers, that's going to work out to give us the right signs. Now let's look at some practical considerations. If we're trying to get power out of this jet, then VB has to be smaller than V jet. If VB was larger than V jet, the blade would be outrunning the jet and we wouldn't get this configuration at all. So for practical applications, we need to have VB less than or equal to V jet for this analysis to work. If that's true, then as I said, that's going to give us that fx is negative. We see that if we look down here, we wind up with cos theta minus 1 multiplying this positive quantity. So fx is some negative force, and it depends on the angles and the velocities involved, how big that force is going to be. And we can also observe that fx goes to zero as the blade velocity gets up towards the jet velocity. And that also makes sense because if the jet and the blade are going the same speed, then there really isn't any new mass catching up to the blade. There's only the, if it's going just a little bit slower, there's only a little bit of mass catching up to do work on the blade. So the force is going to zero as the blade velocity gets up to the jet velocity, as this blade starts freewheeling along with no resistance. Fy, it's always positive, but it also goes to zero as the blade velocity approaches the jet velocity. So we can ask the question, if we're applying this jet to this blade in order to get some useful work done, what's the power that we get out of this? Well, the power is going to be equal to the force dot product with the velocity vector. That'll give us the power output. And in this case, the velocity is aligned in this direction with the x-axis, 
So the force is the X force, and it's the negative of that X force, which is applied to the blade. And the velocity is the blade velocity and the dot product of the two. There's no trigonometric functions in there because they're lined up evenly with each other. If we plug that in, we'll wind up with rho times the area of the jet times the velocity of the jet minus the velocity of the blade squared times one minus cos theta. That's where we pick up the negative sign here by reversing the order of those times the velocity of the blade. And we see that the power also goes to zero as the velocity of the blade goes to the velocity of the jet. That's our freewheel condition. But also interesting, the power goes to zero as the blade velocity goes to zero. So although the force may be high with the blade locked, the amount of work done is very small so that the power output is low. We might ask a question on an exam that would ask, what is the blade velocity for the maximum power output? And we'll look at that case for a Pelton wheel turbine in a later video. So to sum up, we're doing a momentum balance on a moving blade. We've got this blade and it's moving. We can't apply Bernoulli's equation to it because work is being done. So we don't know what this outlet velocity is. But if we switch our frame of reference so that the blade is stationary, then we'll have a lower incoming velocity. V1 will be the relative velocity of the jet and the blade. But we will, in this frame, have no work done. And then we can use Bernoulli to say that these two velocities are the same. And we can calculate the reaction forces that are acting on the water to cause it to change direction, to change its momentum. We do the momentum balance and come out with expressions for these, for these forces. And observing the nature of these forces, we can see that if the blade is moving more slowly than the jet, then there will be a, a negative force acting on the water in the negative x direction. And that will result in some power that's being transferred from the water into the blade. The negative fx is the force acting on the blade in the positive x direction. And when we plug that in, we can get the power output. And we see that it's zero if we're freewheeling, it's zero if we're locked. Somewhere in between, with this blade velocity at some fraction of the jet velocity, we'll get the maximum power output. We'll extract the maximum amount of energy that we can from that jet flow that's coming into the blade.